Hi, it's Matt here from Pilot Practice Exams, and this is for the ATPL CASA exams in Australia uh, for, for uh, flight planning. And this is the what we call the Buffett boundaries. Now, when you first look at this, none of the textbooks really explain this very well. And the handbook, the B727 handbook, doesn't explain it very well. So I thought I'd throw together a quick video just to help people get up to speed very quickly on it and how to apply it so let's have a quick look at a few of the parts obviously you've got pressure altitude up here and along the bottom axis which i've chopped off here you've got indicated airspeed now these curved lines represent the weight so 90,000 kilos 80,000 kilos 70,000 uh, 60,000 that one there would be 50,000 gross weight and they all curve up and over like that now there are three different graphs there's the first one which has no uh, turbulence, the second one which is moderate turbulence, and the third one which is severe turbulence. There's two vertical lines that you need to be aware of. This one here which is your turbulence penetration speed, and this one here which is your VMO. Okay, so VMO relates to your indicated airspeed along the bottom, and then up here is you've got your MMO which relates to your maximum max speed. This graph that you're looking at is the moderate turbulence. Now, the primary difference between the three graphs is that these lines here are much, much higher for no, no turbulence, and then they're lower for heavier turbulence. And what I mean by that is, if you look here at, say, 30, a pressure altitude of 30,000 feet, we're right near the curve for 90,000. Whereas, I'm just flicking through the book, whereas on the uh, graph 2.3 on page 211 of the Boeing handbook, the one for no turbulence, the point of this graph is way up past the 35,000 mark. It's right up near the top of our screen here. And so what that effectively means is that the speed, the margin between our high speed uh, buffer and our low speed stick shaker is going to be much bigger when there's no turbulence and when there's high turbulence our margin of safety between our high speed and our low speed is going to be much less now what do i mean by that well before we get into the graph let's just take a quick look at what this graph is actually going to tell us so after we go in draw up our data on it what we're going to find is that we're going to draw something like this so i've just circled eighty thousand there because this is for 70 uh, aircraft at seventy six thousand, right and so what we do is we draw these lines between the curve and that is our speed range, our safe speed range between there. Now, don't forget this vertical line. If we're, That's our safe penetration speed for turbulence. But if there's no turbulence, then that becomes our speed range at that altitude. So at FL330, that would be our minimum speed, okay, which is around about Mach uh, 0 0.70. And our maximum speed is there so that blue line there is that's mach 0.82 so our maximum speed is probably about mach 0.83 or 4. and if we chose to fly at fl 290 then our safe speed range is obviously uh you can see here we've got a much wider speed range here's what this graph is actually telling us so when we did our aerodynamics, we remember that, you know, we want nice smooth airflow around the wing like this. And we all know about how the stall angle separates the airflow from the surface. And so you create these eddies and then that creates buffeting on the tailplane. Right. So that's that's what we mean when we're talking about our buffet limits. Right. But what we haven't studied in our previous subjects is things called shockwaves from high speed flight. And so when you're going really fast, what happens is this shockwave develops on the top surface of the wing like this. We have a low angle of attack, and this shockwave develops. And behind the shockwave, you get a similar effect to what we get when we have, uh, you know, our angle of attack gets too high and the airflow separates. The shockwave again causes that airflow to separate from the surface behind the shockwave. And the bigger the shockwave, the more... Uh, of that occurs and obviously if we have a shockwave on the wing then that's going to cause buffeting with our control surfaces back here and so that causes us to have an unsafe uh, flight envelope or an unsafe ab ability to control the aircraft and we call that our high speed buffet limit or our shockwave limit we call this one here our low speed limit 
or our low speed buffer limit. So when we come back up to the graph up here, this is our high speed shockwave limit, this point here, and this here is our low speed buffer limit. So what you're going to do is from other factors, you're going to work out, you know, what flight levels are our options, depending on what direction we're flying in, our weight and our thrust limits and all of those types of things. And then you're going to come here and you're going to, on your fl the flight levels that you're considering, you're going to draw the line across at that flight level between the curve for your weight. And then what you're going to see is, where does the max speed I'm proposing to cruise at, this blue line here, where does that sit within that curve? And that at FL290, the speed range we have available between the upper and the lower limit is a lot more. Now, when that speed range gets too narrow, which is right up here, okay, so if we were proposing, say, for example, to fly at uh, this level here, which is 331, uh, okay, then we'd be right up in the corner and that there is called coffin corner in other words there's not enough limit uh, or space between the limits for it to be safe if we're right up here at say uh, fl 340 i think it is likewise if you're right in that very corner even more so than we are there now then obviously you're going to need to fly you know too close to the limit and so what you might have to do is look at, okay, can we fly at that level at, say, Mach 8, which is going to take us away from that limit a little bit. Let's run some numbers on that. What you need to be aware of for the CASA exam is this little paragraph here in the, uh, in the ATPL information booklet about selecting your cruise speed. So when CASA asks us to select our cruise level based on our weight and engine temperature, they want us to do it at the point of engine failure. Now, they're not encouraging us to be uh, dangerous or reckless here. What they want to do is make sure that people don't apply like their own discretionary margin of safety. Because if everybody applied a different discretionary amount, then CASA could never select an answer that everybody will pick. Whereas if everybody takes it right to the limit, then CASA can pick an answer that everybody will pick. When it comes to your answer in your exam if they said what well, you know what is the maximum flight level we can fly at within the buffet boundaries that is definitely within the buffet boundaries so that would be the maximum available flight level you wouldn't pick 290 it's too far within and that's when we start talking about you know people's discretionary margins the last thing that you'll want to note about these buffet boundaries is just up here out of sight they have on the on the page it says for level flight uh, with no turbulence. The second graph says for 40 degree bank angle, moderate turbulence, and the third graph is 50 degree bank angle or heavy turbulence. So these aren't just about turbulence, they're also about if you're going to be performing bank turns, then a different buffet limit applies. And so you would need to make sure that the, the weight and the flight level that you're going to fly at falls safely within those buffet limits for the maximum bank turns that you're going to have in that portion of the flight. So I'm Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, a like. And if you do like these and you want to see when we put up our latest videos, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com.